Hey friend, I'm Brandon Gustafson. I help beginners like you launch their assisted living business in the next 12 months. In today's video, we're going to be getting into how to create a new hire file for your staff at your assisted living business. So if you need some help with that, make sure you stick around for today's video. Hey friend, welcome back to assistedlivinginvesting.net. Before I get started on the video, I wanna remind you to get over to the website and get our free underwriting calculator. Uh, just go to assistedlivinginvesting.net, it'll pop up and you can get access to that for free. I give that to you to help you along your journey. Now let's get into the topic for today's video. We're going to be talking about how to create a new hire file for your staff at your assisted living, for your assisted living business. This is one of those things that um, you probably aren't thinking about. As you're trying to get started with launching your business, you're, you're, this is one of the last things on your mind. Um, but for you that are operating and you found this channel and, and you're like, man, I needed some help. I needed some guidance on this to know what a new hire file is. I really hope this is gonna benefit you. I'm sharing some wisdom of things that I learned as we went through the process that has really benefited us to the point that you know we have a really good process in place. So let's get into that. So what is a new hire file? <laughs> what exactly is that? There's a bunch of things. Really, it's just like the documents that, that you need to gather. So when somebody comes in, you're going to need to capture information from them. They're I-9 documents. If, if you've ever gone to a new job or you've, you've done this recently, it's gonna be like you know your driver's license and your social security number or social security card or your birth certificate or passport or there's there's any number of things that will fall into this, but you're going to need to capture that information. You're going to want to put in there things like training documents that, that people are signing off on, that they perform that training. There's going to be maybe some agreements that you're giving to your staff, um, policies that you need them to sign. Those types of things that you want to make sure you have track of, because when you have a survey come in for your facility, they're going to want to see all of this documentation for each of your staff members. So you want to make sure you have this in a really good spot. I like having paper copies. Um, you can actually like if you get on Amazon and and I'll try to like link a, a thing down below for what this might look like. Um, hopefully we remember to do this, but it is it's kind of like a file that just has folders in it with some tabs and there's three to five tabs in there for the specific things you want to put in there. Um, so you could buy one of those and then use that as a template uh, and then go buy some stuff uh, at Walmart for a lot cheaper <laughs> to kind of get you started. That's something that we did at our facility. But that gives you a paper copy in case you need to hand it off to somebody. I also like to have digital copies of all of this just in case I need it. Um, they're, they're, I try to get away from paper, but I really like to have digital of everything, including this paperwork. So you're just gonna scan in copies, put it in there. Um, if you use Gusto for your payroll, there's actually spots where you can kind of put in files and things like that for your staff members. So that's gonna benefit you. If you're interested in learning more about Gusto, type in Gusto down below. It's a payroll vendor that, that we use and we love. And I also have a referral link down below as well that will give you, I think it like gives you a $100 Visa gift card if you end up signing up through my program or my link. Um, so make sure, you know, if you're in that process of needing to get payroll set up, we really love Gusto and, you know, get a hundred bucks back. So you might as well do it. Why not? Now let's talk a little bit more about some of those documents that you are going to need as you get into this. So I mentioned the I-9 documents, so you're going to definitely want to have that, but there's a lot of other things that you want to kind of keep on file as you're getting into this. Um, you want to have your resume. You want to have an offer letter for the staff member and acknowledgements of the company policies that you're giving to your staff members so that uh, you can <laughs> pull it out in case they decide to leave or they do something that they're not supposed to and you have to let them go. Um, you know, you don't want those things to happen, but it's so much better to upfront get the signed documents and then when something comes up and they do something they're not supposed to, you know, say they're smoking inside the house, they're not allowed to do that and you let them go, like you wanna have that as backup paperwork um, just in the event that, that something comes up. So you wanna make sure you keep all of those things tax forms so w9s w4s you want to keep all these all the all the w's that, that you have uh, you want to keep those on file so that you you can use them if you need to you can reference them you, you just have them on file so having all those tax forms are going to be beneficial we talked about i9 documents so you want to make sure you have birth certificate social security card a driver's license passport not all of those things but the required documents that they bring for their i9 documentation you want to make sure you have copies of that on file so that you have it to reference just in case you need to that it's something that that you need to have in place 
You also want to have direct deposit forms so that they can get the money directly deposited into their account. So you don't have to run checks and have paper checks. As I don't know anybody that does that anymore, but some people might. And what I would suggest is use a payroll vendor like Gusto so you don't have to do that anymore. And then you have their direct deposit forms so you have their banking information in case something gets lost or they need to change it or whatever, um, you've got it on file for your staff. And then you also want to have emergency contact information, having that just in case something comes up, you want to make sure you have that information. So all of these things, you want to make sure you have it on file. Like I mentioned, having something on paper is going to be beneficial, but definitely have something in digital form that you can have in reference and you know put where you need to whenever you need it and can access it at a moment's notice. Uh, you know, if you're on vacation or something like that and somebody is like oh i need you know we had a survey come in we need this documentation for the staff member to be able to get in log into the payroll vendor your google drive account wherever you have it um hand that off and then you don't get any deficiencies for it so super important for you to have that that type of stuff put together now let's talk a little bit about why you need this documentation i've kind of been touching on it as i go through throughout this video so hopefully none of this will surprise you but you want to have it in case an employee leaves something that we like to put together as as paperwork and if you're interested in learning more about this put it type termination down below so i i know that this would be valuable for you but we put in a little thing inside of our paperwork that basically says if you don't give us appropriate notice two weeks or, or whatever number you want to say your last paycheck will be paid at minimum wage um, and and so we put that in there to kind of enforce that hey if you want to leave fine you know we're not going to force you but you have to give us notice because we've got to fill in for you and in a world like assisted living where there's so much turnover with employees um, you want to make sure that you're covered and that's one way that we've found that actually works pretty well to incentivize people to at least give us some notice that they're not going to be working for us anymore. As much as you don't want that to happen, it does give us a little bit of um, leeway there. So you want to make sure you have that just in case. Plus, it's going to benefit you. You know, if you had you have a no smoking policy, you have a, a staff member that's smoking inside the house. You know, it could be cigarettes, could be pot, whatever it is. You have a rule that says, hey, you cannot do this or we will terminate you. They do that. You terminate them. And then you have a case with unemployment and they, they file for it. And you're like, no, like they broke the rules. That's why they got fired. And you want to just have these documents in place so that you can reference them. You want to have it for taxes. Sometimes there, as you're doing the taxes and things are getting sent out to your employees, they may need to reference something. Uh, they may need information. Sometimes when, you, when you're dealing with insurance, workers' comp insurance, for example, you might need to grab some of this information, not necessarily the, the tax stuff, but contact information, last known residence, and some of those things, especially if somebody has left working for you and, and they are now filing a claim that requires workers' comp. Um, this has happened to us before. You want to make sure you have all that information so you can provide it to the insurance so that they can you know, take care of that for you. Making sure that you can pay your employees correctly and on time. Uh, that's another huge reason you want to have all of this in Gusto, in your payroll vendor, so you can do that. And then, like I mentioned, surveys. When they come for surveys, they oftentimes are asking for information about staff members. And so you want to have that on file so you can provide it to the, the person doing the survey so you don't get any deficiencies for a lack of documentation for your staff. The other thing you want to do, is, like if there are requirements for vaccinations or or things like that you want to make sure you have all of that kind of packaged together in this so that you can hand it off and it's very easy for you to do if you found this video to be helpful you know we've been talking a lot here in this video about just what a new hire file is how it works why you need it some of those documents that you need if you found this to be helpful make sure you like the video subscribe and ring the bell as well so you get notified every time we put this content out here we do lives on tuesdays and on thursdays we put out more long form videos and i want to make sure that you are getting the information that you need and the best way to do that is have you ring that bell after you subscribe so you get notified every time we put this content out there and if you need some help as you're going through your journey make sure you go and grab the free resources over on the website we're going to have links down below for all of those, I've got five or six of them to really help you get along and, and move forward on, in your investment journey. But I also have a, a bunch of other paid resources. There's the business planning guide, which is the base of everything that you need to do to help you get started on your assisted living investing journey. And if you need some extra help and guidance, check out our mastermind program. I love the mastermind. I love working with the people in there. You can check out more about that at assistedlivinginvesting.net slash mastermind. And if you want a free strategy session to kind of chat about that and see if it's a good fit for you or not, 
Check this out at assistedlivinginvesting.net slash strategy and we can have a conversation. Does residential assisted living sound interesting to you, but you just don't know how to get started? At assistedlivinginvesting.net, we're here to help beginners like you launch their assisted living business in the next 12 months so they can create that time and financial freedom that they're looking for. And remember, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Keep going step by step by step. I promise that if you do and you're consistent and persistent, you're gonna be successful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.